inflation has ticked down for the September quarter, but it may not be enough to prevent a rate rise on Cup Day. The cost of living rose 5.4% year on year. That's down from 6% in the June quarter. For his analysis, let's bring in Warren Hogan, economic advisor with Judo Bank. And Warren, great to see you. You've already got a tip in for Melbourne Cup Day. You think rates will go up? Yeah, not the tip anyone wanted, um, but today's numbers, I think, all but seal it. The governor's been quite clear in the last week that they're not going to tolerate any upside surprises on inflation. And unfortunately, that's exactly what we got today. So, yes, inflation is down from the highs of last year, but at 5.4 per cent, it's it's higher than what they had been projecting. So they needed it down at closer to five or a bit below by now. Um, and core inflation, uh, domestic inflation, all of these various measures that try to look at the underlying pulse of inflation are all still too high. And probably most importantly, in the quarter actually picked up a little bit of pace from the June quarter. So not only is inflation not falling fast enough, there's signs that it's actually stabilising, which is the worst possible news for the RBA, which needs it to continue to fall to get down to their target of 2 to 3%. So is another two this year, one before Christmas as well. Um, is that the, the prospect you think most likely? Look, I think at this stage they will be thinking, you know, they'll be focusing on doing something in November in response. Um, effectively, they, in their forecast, had a, a core inflation rate of 0.9 penciled in and it came out at 1.2. So that doesn't sound like much, but... As I said, the governor's made it clear they don't have any tolerance for it and it's happening more slowly. The other thing to bear in mind is that the government's cost of living measures all kicked in in the quarter, uh, whether it's childcare, energy relief, rent assistance, they all actually took about 0.6 off inflation. So if they hadn't have been there, inflation would have actually been closer to 2% in the quarter. So all up, this suggests that you know, they definitely need to go in November to keep our monetary policy in line with the inflation but I think also it raises the risk, given that the economy remains resilient, that they may have to go in December as well. But there'll be many other factors, including employment numbers and the housing market, that'll go into that calculation. You spoke about that, those uh, subsidies or the government interventions in, in childcare, rent, electricity. While it brings down the rate in, in the quarter, they are also expansionary, aren't they? Stimulus. So, in a way, making the job harder for the RBA. Yeah, I mean, this is the sort of the wicked situation we find ourselves in where the, the government can't actually do a lot on cost of living without potentially making it worse. By, by, by you know, doing a petrol excise cut right now, they help with measured inflation, they help people, but, of course, they're putting money into the economy, which works against what the RBA is trying to do. So, I mean, I think the government's done a pretty good job um, of being restrained and allowing the budget to go into surplus. Many would argue they should be doing more. But that's exactly it. The, gov the government... There's not much the government can do. It's up to the RBA. And until our interest rate is up to a level that's sort of in line with this inflation, until our real interest rate, until our interest rate is above inflation, really it's all up to the RBA. The, the idea of a fuel excise cut, well, you mentioned that there. What do you think of the economics of it, particularly in the context of the real movements in this space are driven out of Saudi Arabia and elsewhere? Yeah, and, and look, the RBA will be looking through all of this. Oil, petrol prices, I should say, are up a lot in the quarter, up 7%, but that's not what's driving the RBA's thinking. And, I mean, look, the, 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 to do a petrol excise cut now would be very popular. Um, it would be you know, reasonably expensive, depending on what they did, say 5 or $6 billion. But, of course, that's 5 or $6 billion you put into the economy right when the RBA is trying to actually slow the economy. So it's counterproductive. It'll help with measured inflation, but it'll just raise the chance that we have to have higher rates next year because the reality is the economy is slowed, but it's resilient and the housing market's performing well and we're producing jobs. So, you know, it's not... The debate has been about whether there's going to be rate cuts next year. Well, I think that's misguided. The, the debate is actually whether the cash rate's got to go above 5% like it is in every other similar economy around the world. Um, and, of course, things like fuel excise cuts will only add to the, the likelihood that interest rates have to go up even further. Warren, we're almost out of time, but I, I do want to pick up something else you said there, that these are that there's signs of domestic inflation, a sticky 
uh, inflation in services area as well. But I just ask you about that because the Treasurer is talking about global uh, effects of the oil price, um, the, the OPEC cuts in production, that we're dr basically in his statement, he says, I'll read it to you, he says, the world is inflicting price pressures on Australians and we are doing our best to ease them. That's his statement. What, what do you say in response to that? Look, I'm worried about this. I mean, th this is just not right. I mean, we've got domestic inflation. We've got domestic cost pressures on businesses that are trying to pass it through to their customers, which they have been, and that's driving the inflation, whether it's labour costs, whether it's energy costs, whether it's insurance costs, transport costs. Those global factors are playing a role, but the, the key problem for the RBA and the real risk is domestic, and that's come through loud and clear in these figures. And I worry because the government really does need to, I think, start to change tact here and explain to the community why higher rates are needed to get rid of inflation. Rather than trying to distance themselves from it, I think leadership here now is about trying to make it easier for the RBA to get the job done and also, of course, explaining to people more broadly what we're trying to achieve, which is getting inflation down. That's what's yeah. hurting out there. Maybe uh, Jim Chalmers taking on a bit more of his uh, hero Paul Keating's approach. Yeah, I mean, I think Costello and Keating would have been talking about why we need higher rates at this stage and explaining it to the Australian people. I think it's critical. Um, we'll wait and see. It's a critical six months for the government and uh, we'll this is going to be a major issue. It is a critical six months, no doubt, and, and it's back to uh, the main game of the economy. And always good to get your insights, Warren. Thanks. Thanks, Kieran.